Hi everyone, Professor Zemanek here. So normally in class, we would be going over our prompt together, but because we are not in class, I thought I would make a quick video um, walking you through the prompt. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and literally what I'm gonna do is just kind of read through the prompt and um, yeah, just kind of talk through it. Okay, so let's see if I can figure out how to share my screen. Yeah, okay, I think I got it. Awesome. Okay, I gotta get my glasses on. Alrighty, so we are doing a rhetorical analysis essay, which I'm really, really excited about. I really enjoy rhetorical analysis. I've told you this um, probably in other videos, so I won't bore, bore you with it again. But um, so for the assignment, it says right up here that the student will write a well-organized, cohesive analytical essay that is three to four pages. You, um, the writer, are going to be looking at one of the articles we've read over the past few questions in a second and use the rhetoricals to answer the article. The goal of the essay is to decide if the article has, if the author has composed a sound argument based on their use or lack of use of ethos, pathos, and logos. So that last part is pretty important. So not every article that we read has all three of the parts. Not everyone has credibility, not everyone has emotion, and maybe people don't have enough of the, the logos aspect. Um, so what you'll wanna do is if your author or your article is missing one of those pieces, you need to tell us why. You can analyze the absence of one of the appeals. So I, I think people in the past have tried to find articles that don't have one and then they don't write about it. That's not a good shortcut. I will tell you that right now. Um, you need to then analyze, okay, well, this person has zero logos. There's zero facts in this article. Maybe they decided not to do that because, and then analyze it. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So again, you're going to be analyzing the argument, looking at the ethos, the pathos, and the logos, um, or the lack of one of those if something's lacking. Okay, the articles you can choose from. So here are the three articles that you may choose from. Um, it's the Guardians, where the boundary between, where is the boundary between your phone and mind? Nicholas Carr's, is Google making a stupid? And Sherry Turkle's, The Flight from Conversation. So those are the three articles that you can choose from. Okay, um, this section here about how I might go about this. This is this is how I would think about it. Not each of these bullet points needs to be one paragraph. You can have multiple paragraphs in one section. I'm just kind of trying to show you how I would section it off essentially. So I would definitely have an introduction paragraph. You need to set up what you're analyzing. So which article are you picking? Um, tell your reader your goal is to kind of decide if how like sound the argument really is, okay? Um, and your thesis should definitely say that. The next, I would analyze the ethos. So I would talk about author's credibility or maybe lack of credibility, either way. Um, then I would talk about the pathos, the, the emotion, or again, lack of. And then the logos, I would talk about logos within or maybe not within the essay. And finally, of course, end with the conclusion. Um, so for each three of those main body paragraphs, or sections, I'm gonna say sections, not paragraphs. You wanna make sure you have examples from the articles for each one. Um, again, if there's a lack of something, you won't have an example and that's an exception. But if you say, no, this author is credible, show me why. So why is Nicholas Carr credible? Why is Sherry Turkle, Turkey, Turkey, <laughs> not Turkey, Turkle credible? Um, or with the Guardian article, um, we don't have an author's name. So, but still, how might that article be, be a credible article? Or does the lack of an author make it not credible? I don't know. You know, you'll figure it out. I mean, I do know, but I want you to figure it out too. Um, okay, so hopefully that makes sense in terms of what I'm looking for here. So again, these bullet points aren't meant to be like paragraphs necessarily. They're more of just kind of the way I would section off the essay. You could do paragraphs for each one. I'll let, I'll let you decide on that. Okay, grading criteria. So I really believe in a holistic grading, um, holistic grading. I don't particularly like rubrics that have assigned points for them um, when it comes to essays. So like the thesis is worth five points, your introduction's 10 points. I just, you know, 
you might have a really spot on thesis, but if the rest of the essay falls apart, then does your thesis really do the job it needs to do? That would be a question I could ask. And so I think holistic grading is just kind of what I, I enjoy. So that's what this um, grading criteria says. It is a rubric. They are the things that I'm looking for in the essay, but things aren't necessarily just assigned points. So you don't just get points for having a thesis or points for an intro or conclusion. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's go through these. Um, the first one, the essay should be three to four pages with multiple paragraphs used. When I say three as our minimum, I don't mean two and a half or two and three fourths. I mean like three full pages, okay? Um, we don't have to get crazy and like, you only have one more line to fill three pages. I'm not gonna like knock you off for that. But if you turn in two and a half pages, that's not three, okay? And then on the other side of that, I know rhetorical analysis can get, re analysis can get really exciting. Um, and you could go on and on and on forever. I ask that you would just refrain and write only for maybe four and a half pages, okay? That's kind of the goal there. Um, basic essay structure, so intro, body paragraphs, conclusion. Um, you need to bring in one source, aka the article that you're analyzing. You need to add quotes from the article, so that way as a reader I can fully understand your analysis. Um, if you want to bring in another article, I suppose that you could, but I'm just wondering why you would do that if we're just analyzing one particular article for its its argument. Um, so yeah, maybe if you're interested in bringing something in, talk to me about that and we can kind of chat about it, okay? Um, this next one, talk about complexities, over, avoid oversimplifying your ideas. Don't ignore the difficult or complicated parts of analysis. Yes, so I put this in here because I think oftentimes, um, you know, like we can talk about Nicholas Carr really fast. We, we see Nicholas Carr, we say, Nicholas Carr is credible because he writes a lot of stuff. The end, and you move on. Yeah, well, a lot of people write a lot of stuff. So why does that make Nicholas Carr credible? All right, so you've got to dig into the analysis, really help the reader figure out if the, um, you know, different rhetorical appeals are happening in the essay. So... Yes, and that's something that we'll think about in workshop, um, trying to kind of dig farther into analysis. Um, let's see, this next one, take time to proofread after you've written your essay. Think about the mistakes um, that you tend to make and watch out for those. Yeah, so I, oftentimes, you know, I think people just try and write and just get it in, which is great. Like that's a good first draft, but then we need to kind of go through and look at it. And I know editing and looking at your essay again can be really time consuming and weird and strange and just not fun, but we need to do it. So yeah, okay. Um, this next one, underline your thesis at the end of your introduction paragraph. So I started doing this um, a couple semesters ago and I really liked it because it helps me know that you know where your thesis is because you can't imagine how many times I've read essays and people ask me where they they think, they ask me where I think their thesis is. And that means I haven't really thought through their thesis statement. They don't really know what their argument is. Um, so I really like you to kind of point out, at least for this first essay, where your, where your thesis is, what's your argument? Okay, and then finally, all of the elements of the prompt is addressed. So you've got the intro, you've got the ethos, you've got the pathos, you've got the logos, and then the conclusion. Um, important dates to remember, super important. Um, we have workshop on in week four, and like it says, students who do not participate in workshop we lose 10% of the final grade for the essay. So you really want to make sure um, you're participating in workshop. I'm going to try and hopefully make it interesting and good and worth your time. Um, and then the final draft is due February 14th by 11.59 p.m. That is a Sunday and that is Valentine's Day. So that can be your Valentine's Day gift to me, your essay. <laughs> um, the essay is worth 100 points, as you see here, with a little asterisk, because the little star is telling you that if you visit the um, LRC virtually, of course, but you go see a tutor, you can earn five extra credit points. Yes. 
so awesome. Um, you need to email me some sort of confirmation that you went and saw Tudor. I think they usually send little receipts um, or other things. I don't know, we can talk about how we can figure that out, but I need some sort of confirmation that you went and saw Tudor. As I say, you can visit the tutor more than once, and that's awesome, and I'd say go for it, but you're only going to earn five points for your essay. So if you go 18 times, you're not going to get, that's math, whatever that amount is, 18 times five. Um, I had that happen to me. Someone went like four times, and they got 20 extra credit points, and I was just like, yeah, that's not going to happen again. So yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I wanted to say about the prompt itself. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, you just let me know. I will help you out via email or come to office hours and we can chat about it. Um, yeah, I am here to help you. So please take advantage of that. And I'm really excited to read your essays. I think they're gonna be really good. Okay, I hope this was at least helpful in some ways. It was helpful for me to talk it through. So that's good. Alrighty, everyone, bye.